Uh, thank you, everybody, to be here. It's uh, really an honor for me to an honor for me to be here tonight and to share some understandings and uh, visions and uh, some thinkings about 3D remote sensing for the forest observations. So basically, today I'm going to talk about this a uh, 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 very brief review for the detailed access of field plot, given the time that we have. So basically, if we think about the 3D remote sensing for forest structure observations, it is really a big topic. So the scale actually varied a lot uh, from a global scale to a local scale. Either use uh, satellite observations or different kind of in situ observations. And if we look at the role of the uh, in situ observations, So basically that uh, what we get is the date and what we really want to know is the information. So in principle that uh, we do not really need the field observations if we can get the uh, observations of the large area knowledge directly. But however, that from the date we have to the information we need, we have a big gap. In order to fill this gap, we need a lot of field reference data in order to understand the date and uh, thus to get the knowledge of the forest information. Information. And if you look at the forest plot, especially the 3D remote sensing for forest plot observations, it's uh, like uh, there uh, has been a lot of new technologies and uh, solutions to understand and to observe the forest. In the last 20 years, this research area has been extremely active and we have been seeing a lot of different technologies appeared in this field, including the territory leader scanning, the mobile and the personal leader scanning, the photogrammetry or structure from motion, UAV leader scanning or consumer sensors like depth camera, structure light. So all this instrument has already become available in the field. So now the question is that how we can derive the information from this uh, data and what information we can derive. So if we think about the, the, all, uh, the, the big picture, so we have the hardware and also we have the software. So from the hardware soft, uh, point of view that basically uh, the change has been dramatically. I still remember like our, actually our beginning of 2000, when I first touched this uh, terrestrial data scanning, the sensor itself is 15 kilo, without battery, without control unit, just a scanner is 15 kilo. At that time, that I suppose the uh, terrestrial data scanning is like, a, uh, it's like a toy for the science scientist. Nobody thinks that it will be going to a really field observation. And nowadays, the terrestrial data scanning is only about three and a half kilo. One person can observe, uh, operate it anywhere. And also that like we have a lot of new sensors, small size, lightweight, and also affordable. And from the software side, we actually need to, from the raw data derived to different features. We need the stem curve, branch, quality of the trees, for the single trees, for every single tree in our sample plot. So given these new observations, so what kind of opportunities we have now? So if we look at the, the uh, general processing chain, we got the date and the thing we need to do is actually to derive the trees and get the individual, uh, individual uh, features like the basic features like tree height, ground size, DPH, biomass, ground shape, and also all the other features based on these. The first thing we need to do is actually to segment the date into individual objects. And after that, we can get the information from individual trees. In the last 10 years or maybe five years, the most significant progress is the UAV laser scanning. It moved observations from the ground to the air. It provides a bird view of the forest, which has been never been possible before UAV come practically used. So nowadays that UAV laser scanning uh, is very fast and also it provides a 
a huge more efficient uh, observations compared to the field methods. So here is a couple of uh, images to show the forest uh, captured by the UAV laser scanning, either in a easy uh, forest, medium forest, and difficult forest. And basically what we get is the uh, trees at a different level. At some point, we see the trees very, in a very detail, all the stem and the branches, we can capture them. And at some point that we only see the upper part of the tree crown, and we actually miss all the lower part of the trees. When we get the uh, 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 UAV, laser, UAV laser scanning data, we want is to actually derive the individual tree uh, objects and get the information. We need a lot of different algorithms here. So here example like a, a comparison of different algorithms. So basically that what we can get for the different uh, tree structures for the dominant, co-dominant, intermediate and surpass trees are different. Uh, in this comparison, we use, we use like eight point per square meter. From these trees, we get 90% of the dominant trees and 80% uh, of the co-dominant trees. For the su surprise trees, that we actually lost a lot of information from here. And also like when we're using the higher point density, we actually see that the result can be improved significantly. And when we get the new date, we actually that uh, got a lot of uh, new opportunities here. So if we look at the 3D remote sensing that, uh, uh, let's take the terrestrial data scanning as an example. So basically terrestrial data scanning is not necessary to be a, a technique that we select. It's actually the, happened to be the technique that survived in the past years. So here, the reason is that, that it actually turns something impossible before to possible. Uh, one good example is the stem curve. Basic stem curve is the most important tree parameters in forestry, but it cannot be measured for the standing trees before. Uh, the only way to measure it, or the only way to accurately measure it is to cut it down, to cut into pieces. And after that, we know the, the uh, diameter along the tree grow directions. By using the terrestrial data scanning that we actually record the forest, in point cloud and bring it to the room. And after that, using different algorithms to, to derive the uh, structures and the detailed information. So it is indeed the, the, the possibilities to, de to turn to something impossible before to possible now, make the terrestrial data scanning survive in the past year's competitions. Uh, another opportunities we got is like the very, uh, where lately that we, we have been demonstrated that the tree height estimate is actually can be estimated more accurately through the remote sensing sensors compared to the traditional uh, field inventories. So here example showing that a comparison between the uh, field inventory and the three different remote sensing technologies like the personal laser scanning, handhold personal laser scanning, UAV laser scanning and the UAV image-based technology. It's in different colors here. The purple is the field measurement, traditional field measurement. The red one is the personal laser scanning. The blue one is the UAV laser scanning and the star. The red, uh, yellow star is the UAV image-based. We actually noticed that there has been like two turning points, like the 20, 21 meters. So basically, the trees we see in this 21 to 30 meters, we see a clearly underestimate of field measurement for the trees. And above the trees of 30 meters, the uppermost, basically of the trees above this uh, threshold, the trees from the uh, remote sensing technology are ex expected to be more accurate than the field measurement. So basically that the tree height is one of the most uh, time consuming measurement in the field. And these uh, findings actually turn uh, open a new gate to collect the tree height in the field. So in the future that we can save the time from uh, doing this conventional field observations, changing it to just using a, a small UAV laser scanning, using either image or 
using either image or laser scan or laser scanning technologies to observe the trees from above. Actually, there's one in very interesting thing to see here is like when we have the uh, field measurement here in the left image, we see a lot of variance. But if we take the field measurement out, we see like all the uh, remote sensing technology actually meet, meet each other quite well. So from this good uh, correlation that we can we can uh, make a sound conclusion that the field of the remote sensing technology either from the ground or from the UAV, either using the positive, uh, passive uh, imagery or active laser scanning, basically give a quite consistent uh, tree height measurement from the field. Basically, uh, the, the, the figure here we show is actually from the local sensors. It just cost, uh, I mean, the uh, imagery and the laser scanner is just cost a, a couple of hundred uh, euros. And we also make a comparison with the professional sensors using the state of art best possible uh, laser scanning date. And we actually find a similar result. We also found like two turning points. 15 meters, similar to the previous one, and the 20 meters. So for the trees below 15 meters, uh, terrestrial laser scanning actually underestimate the tree height. But for the tree above 20 meters, the field observations actually overestimate the tree height. So this result actually uh, support, supports the previous uh, study and also give us a new way, a way to understand the remote sensing that currently the remote sensing has already been able to replace some of the field measurement. Even though this may be a controversial conclusion, but uh, uh, for a particular tree features, especially here for the tree height, I think we, we can already be able to draw this conclusion. Uh, actually, this, uh, these two studies, the first is using the, using the low cost sensors and the second is using the uh, professional high end sensors. It's carried out in two uh, forest sites, one in Croatia and one in Finland. And basically they, the conclusion are uh, agree with each other. We are also very happy and also encourage researchers from different parts of the world to conduct a similar research, uh, to conduct a similar experiment on this topic to verify that whether the uh, close range remote sensing has already been able to replace the field, uh, field tree height measurement and to be applied in the op operational uh, force inventory. Uh, the, the opportunities are coming from different, uh, different directions. So basically now, nowadays the data has be, become really easy to collect from using different sense, different platform, different sensors at a different point of time. So here is just an example showing the data collect at two point of time. So basically just by comparing the uh, DSM, the digital surface model, we can easily to identify the changes over time. This, is, this example shows the changes, uh, uh, the damage of the forest by this uh, wind, by the winter storm. And also by using the by temple date that we can also uh, detect the tree species quite easily. Here, this shows the tree species between the coniferous and the deciduous. For the coniferous, that uh, if we use uh, summer data and the winter date, there will be a big difference. But, uh, sorry, there will be a, only a small difference between two uh, date sites. And if we are using summer data and the winter date at this uh, uh, for the deciduous tree we will see a big difference between the observations. And here actually that we, we use the first, first part state and the last part to uh, simulate the winter and summer date. For the different uh, point of time, it can be, uh, it can apply equally on. Uh, we have now a very good technology, technology uh, progress fast. The sensor is getting smaller and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the software has become more and more uh, robust. Uh, but we still actually uh, facing a lot of challenges, uh, especially here, like in this uh, uh, here, especially in the software side. That uh, do we actually already have the capability? The question is that do we already have the capability to derive all the features we need? 
Uh, I think we can see this, uh, look at these questions uh, from three levels, from the sensor level, from the data level, and also from the op uh, algorithm level. So from sensor level, that the things that we really want to know is that do the state of art uh, sensors actually give us all the data we want to know? So uh, in this uh, benchmark that we actually compare the state of art uh, high resolution system to measure the forest, measure three different kind of forests in the easiest, easy stand, medium stand and the difficult stand. Using the airborne laser scanning, uh, it's a very low attitude flight airborne laser scanning or it's equivalent to the UAV laser scanning, which produce like 450 point per square meter, very dense point cloud. And the other one is this five stationary uh, multi-scan TRS. So this is uh, you know, practically the best data available in the, in the uh, TRS scenario. Actually that we actually uh, try to ask the operator, the expert to, to identify all the trees by uh, manually identifying. So from the TRS manual identified, we actually found like from this easy, medium, difficult plot, we actually 97, 93, and 75% of the trees. From the UAV laser scanning, from the above uh, wheel point, we got uh, about uh, around 90%, 70%, and 55% of all the trees in the plot. So between this uh, terrestrial point of view and from UAV point of view, we got like 10 to 20% difference. So this result actually give us a uh, very important information is like, so even though that we use manual identification, the best what we can imagine currently, if we think that human beings are still better than the computer. So basically that what we can get is not everything we want to know, especially from the above canopy that we only get like from 90% to 50% of all the trees in the field. Uh, from the data level, that the challenge is also um, pretty clear. So the sensors, as we just mentioned, that the sensor is becoming smaller and more affordable. So it, it's the collecting the data is become easier, faster, and the data become cheaper. However, the high quality data is not always guaranteed. Uh, here, example of this handhold laser scanning. So it typically depends on the SLAM algorithm to uh, op optimize the trajectory in order to get the final point cloud date. So from the SLAM that uh, it can, typically it works pretty well, especially now there's a newer version, but there has always also some other report previously that reports that the SLAM can be completely failed in forest with either very high or very low stem density. Uh, however, this report is a uh, only report so far. There are two, uh, two plots reports that this uh, SLAM failed. Is it really these two cases, the uh, individual case isolated uh, study or there are something, something commonly there in the field we do not know yet. So this needs to be clarified in the future. And uh, all, all, all the researchers are encouraged to uh, clarify and test this uh, registration performance in your own data. So in principle, like this misregistration can be found even in the more uh, moderate comp complex uh, forest conditions. So the data is uh, from the mobile data, the quality is not as good as uh, terrestrial laser scanning, the stationary terrestrial laser scanning. However, one thing that we also got to be keep in mind that even though the data quality are not perfect, that we are still able to carry out a lot of work based on this data. Like the thing that we just mentioned about the tree height estimation. If our aim is to capture the tree top, even though the data uh, quality is a little bit low, we can still use it for tree height measurement. Uh, here's an ex another example of the uh, Google Tango. So this is a project launched by Google using the structure light uh, in 2014. 
Unfortunately, the, the project ended in 2018. At that time, it is only like only uh, solutions based on the cell phone that can capture 3D point cloud from this uh, very low cost sensor, if you call that a low cost. Uh, the problem is actually that the repeatability of Google Tango is, is not that perfect. Here we show that uh, if we marry this tree like for three times, we basically can get the good result for two times for the individual tree. But in the third time, the tree trunk actually goes go inside the trees. Basically, this is actually the misregistration problem. So actually that's Google actually announced that basically it, it, they want to, to, to develop the technology more sensor independent. But somehow that I have some suspicions that suspicions that this kind of misregistration is also part of part of the reason that the Google actually uh, decided to stop the project. So it, it is uh, just an example to show that the registration in the personal laser scanning, in the mobile laser scanning, and for the, all these mobile solutions are quite challenging, especially in the forest condition, in the compli complicated forest conditions. Uh, we just look at in the sensors and the date. Basically, that from the sensors, we do not get everything we want. And uh, from the date, we actually have a lot of challenges in the quality. The data is not as good as we wish for, uh, from certain uh, technology and platforms. And from algorithm that uh, basically that do we also have already uh, uh, achieved the best what we have already get. So here is an example of the comparison of the result from TRS, the best available point cloud data currently in the field. Uh, if we look at the, the, this, uh, these figures, the lines here is the correctness. Basically, it means the, the percentage of the mapped trees extract from the TR state that is corresponding to a tree in the field. So basically, this is a true detection. And the plot here, uh, the bar here is the correctness, uh, this completeness. Basically, it, it is the percentage of the trees that are standing in the plot that are successfully mapped it means it should be uh, it it should be sorry this is uh, should be uh, as close as one hundred percent this is, should be not zero but one hundred. Uh, this each bar represent one method. So typical uh, altogether there are eighteen method benchmark in the same date, in the three different categories in the easy force conditions, the medium force conditions, and difficult force conditions, and each bar represent uh, a result from different, uh, different algorithm. So we can see that the, uh, among these 18 measures that the uh, correctness is quite stable. So basically no, no matter uh, for the most of the measures that we get up around 100% of correctness across different force conditions. And for the correctness, we actually get a very steady decrease from the uh, 70, 80% from easy forest to below 40% in the difficult plot. And also we see that the single scan is uh, clearly lower, give lower uh, completeness for compared to the multi-scan. For the multi-scan that we can get up around 100% in the uh, easy forest, and uh, it decreased to about 60% for the difficult plot. Here we see a lot of variance between different methods. Basically this means that there are still a lot of space to improve the algorithm and the design of the, of the algorithm indeed play a big role in the, in the performance of, of how well that we can estimate the force the features from the date. So if we make a, a short summary of the, about the 3D remote sensing for the forest uh, field measurement. So here, we can now get the plot level uh, tree estimations for the individual trees in the plot. So we have different point of uh, point of views from either terrestrial view or from the aerial, uh, aerial point of view. We can get the tree positions, tree height, ground, diameter, uh, dimensions, structures, and terrain as a routine nowadays. Here, especially two things that, actually three things are very important to, to notice that 
basic the tree position, tree height, and the terrain are not typically measured in the conventional forest inventory because that is too time consuming to, to get this information. Uh, but nowadays from this uh, 3D room sensing, we can directly get this information quite straightforward. Another thing that we need to pay attention is that uh, nowadays the data has become cheap. We have a lot of sensors, a lot of different platform, but the thing is that to get information from the data, from the large amount of data is still very difficult. It is still very expensive. So the question we are facing now is uh, how to use this newly available forest structure for different applications, for the forest inventory, for the biodiversity studies, for the uh, carbon monitoring, and what feature are needed in the future for different applications. And what date do we need? Do we need to improve current date, or is, is the current date uh, already aware, uh, already enough that we are, should focus on the more features and, and better algorithm? So basically, these are different level of the le level of the questions. So what data we need? What feature we need? And how to use these features? All right, as I mentioned that basically the uh, 3D remote sensing for forest observations is a really huge topic. It starts from the satellite to airborne to UAV to terrestrial measurement to the personal or consumer level measurement and the scale varied a lot and the technology also vary a lot. So in this today's uh, talk, we try to have a very quick and a brief overview of the technologies now available for the forest plot observations. Uh, we have now have different uh, technologies and we have uh, new opportunities. It actually changed our, our new, our knowledge for the forest observations. For example, like the tree height estimation. We used to think that the uh, ground measurement is the best what we get. And nowadays we actually uh, start to think that the remote sensing is a better observation compared to the conventional field measurement. But we still face a lot of challenges, like the quality of the data. Like the data we have is not good enough, it doesn't record everything. And also that uh, the artificial intelligence is not good enough so far to give uh, everything record recorded in the data. So that we need to improve in all all the levels, sensor level, data level, algorithm level. Okay, I just stop here and hopefully that uh, this give a good overview so that we can start to have some discussions. All right. Okay, uh, the floor is open that I'm very happy to be able to answer some questions and to have some discussions on the topics, to have some new insight on this topic. Uh, See, there's professor, some, some I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I am from Turkey. I am Can Vatandaşlar. Uh, and my question is related to uh, personal laser scanning. Um, in the last years, uh, we are using uh, GeoSlam uh, personal laser scanning, Zeprevo, mm. you know. Mm. And uh, we can derive many uh, inventory, forest inventory measures, uh, such mm. as BBH, uh, tree height, uh, or timber volume. But mm. we can't uh, we can't identify the three species uh, correctly. I know you mentioned the uh, bitemporal uh, data, uh, but uh, we have uh, no chance to use uh, such data uh, in Turkey. We have not uh, so many uh, data sources, you know. So is there a, a useful algorithm uh, for? three species identification uh, with the mobile or uh, personal laser scanning data. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for your question that I, I, I think that you, you have raised a 
very uh, very important question here, and actually that is, uh, I think Klaus also has mentioned many times that if if he has money, he will invest it on this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, actually, this is a, a is a single most uh, Im important topic currently, and also that is also very challenging. So, I think in general that if if we think about you know large scale or you know uh, practical applications, I have to say that sorry, we do not yet have a good, uh, good solutions currently because the tree species is a really a uh, challenging topic, and also especially that uh, that. Uh, that this topic itself is 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 very difficult. Uh, actually, that we 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 used to only have the point cloud date, or we used only have the image date we can use for the species recognition. And nowadays, that uh, we have different uh, data, like the laser scanning is become multi uh, spectral. So we used to only have the one channel. Now we have three channels, like you know this uh, Canadian this Titan date. And also, like from the texture, that when we use a different uh, scanner at a different wavelengths, it actually stimulates the multispectral texture laser scanning. And also, we use we have this uh, hyperspectral texture uh, laser scanner. So, like this, uh, I, I assume that basically from the spectral base, that it it is a very good way to go forward. But the thing is that the uh, spectral reflectance is is very complicated. Uh, how to calibrate the spectral reflectance that uh, is is currently I suppose there's no no practical solution in a large range. We can use some reference targets and put the reference target in the field, uh, but does that really enough? It's not yet clear. Uh, I think uh, recently there are also some new interesting. Uh, 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 studies on using the deep learning method to for the tree species classification. That I suppose this is also where good directions. Uh, I think this is uh, for the uh, uh, deep learning study is only at the beginning. We actually can an anticipate that there will be a lot of new studies in the future. And an another thing that is actually what I, what I mentioned here, using these uh, uh, multi-tempo observations to use the uh, different either shape or the reflectance from the images to get the to separate the different species uh, just to make 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 this complicated question uh, simple that uh, we are now actually lack good solutions and uh, I think that the study is now currently going on yeah thank you uh, and another problem uh, we face uh, on the upper stem, you know, the upper stem of the uh, trees. And uh, in order to uh, extract uh, stem curve, uh, we need to uh, some information uh, on the upper stem uh, DPH. But uh, I saw a picture uh, in your previous slides. Uh, I think it, it was a Norwich spruce, right? Uh, mm. Especially uh, we have uh, another uh, spruce uh, species here in Turkey, and uh, in spruce species, uh, we can't extract the uh, upper stem uh, due to uh, foliage and uh, other branches. Uh, it's very hard uh, to extract uh, the BH information. Uh, so, uh, how can we uh, extract, uh, extract meaningful information? Uh, on upper stem, uh, uh, do you have any uh, suggestion uh, on this topic? Basically, that uh, this, this is uh, to get the different level of the information is actually a balance between the uh, the cost and the detail of the detailed of the information. So you, you know that basically that if we have so I, I suppose you are using temperature laser scanning for this uh, stem curve or using the personal laser scanning. Yeah, personal laser yeah. scanning. Yeah. So Just basically, like zipper, uh, yeah. Screen. Yeah. So in principle that uh, if you actually just target on the only single tree and to go around it, if we assume that the, the slam actually work well, uh, by working around it and uh, maybe 
a few times that basically there will be more information coming from the upper side of the stem. So, and also possibly from, from the, the branches. So if we have like the better observations, more dense, and the observations is, is targeted for only one tree, we typically get a better date. So from that, it's more easy or more reliable to derive the stem curve from the upper side, even the branches. So eventually this is a this is a this is a decision. This is just the balance between the cost and the, the information uh, people want to extract it. Thank you. So if 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 there's uh, enough budget, basically that uh, we can get a lot of information from the point cloud data or 3D ribbon sensing. But if we want to keep the budget low, that uh, at some point we have to lower our expectations and uh, also like like uh, there can be the upper part can also be estimate rather than the measured because that if we uh, using the estimation using the stem curve estimation to estimate what is missing in the date that is also a possible way to overcome the problem many thanks Thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, Hi. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you very much for your excellent presentation. It Thanks. is a huge, it is a huge topic, um, very relevant, I think. Yeah. So probably now we don't know which is the best uh, device to measure the forest. I think uh, any of them, uh, they have different uh, advantages. But in our case, we are working with terrestrial laser scanning. Mm -hmm. um, if I remember your what you talk, I think you talk about you spoke about three level, plot level. But what about the star level? Because we are really interesting about star level because we we would like to use TLS as operational device in forest inventory. So my question is about the next. Uh, do you think if we could obtain good relationship between uh, some metrics or variable uh, directly estimated with TLS and our data uh, uh, obtained at field, uh, will it be possible to estimate forest attribute in a similar way to area uh, vassal approach? I mean, as area laser scanner because this is very useful, for example, I think in Scandinavia. And if you think it will be possible, so in this way, I think we could do just single scan, for example, because maybe we don't know so much information if we have this approach, which one would you think uh, uh, will be the, the biggest challenge according to this? Oh, so it, it Yes, thanks for the question. If, if we summarize, basically the question is that whether it's possible to using the TRS in the uh, practical force inventory. Yes. And, and also that whether the tier as a single scan TRS can be used. Yeah, this is my right. question because we're we yeah. more interesting about force inventory than tree mm. level or even plot level. Yeah. We don't care so much if we can't uh, locate all the trees, mm. but we are more interesting about uh, making good estimation about any, I don't know, biomass, basal area, dominant aid, any of these uh, relevant variables in forest inventory. Yeah. So probably if we find good relationship between point cloud metrics, um, our variables, I think we could estimate with uh, um, aerial, uh, area based approach. This is my question. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, basically, that I I, I think terrestrial scanning are basically ready to be used in the practical forest, like in a couple of years, or even very close from now. And uh, they are ready to be used in a way that uh, in the in the easy forest condition. So I I am pretty positive that is already close to that point. It can be put in the practice. Uh, it can 
come uh, it can derive de uh, can derive directly the basic tree parameters like positions dph tree height tree height is probably a bit difficult because of observation and also and uh, but for the more challenging uh, forest conditions like difficult forest condition uh, I, I i think that they are still need time to to go to the practice and basically this also actually raises another question is that uh, this is more challenging questions and uh, should should we actually follow the conventional inventory protocol to measure all the trees or is it enough like we record like uh, certain big trees is enough because big trees actually the best uh, have has uh, almost all the biomass volume in the field. The so small trees is actually have only only part of that. And the, the thing is that from terrestrial laser scanning, and also partly from the UAV laser scanning, what we miss is actually small trees. We do not miss many big trees. So currently, uh, to answer this question is difficult because that uh, is a we are uh, if we think that terrorist related scanning and the UAV related scanning has the possibilities to be used in practice. We actually need to challenging to challenge the conventional inventory theory or protocol. So we actually propose that we should propose a new scenario that we do not use in all the trees, but major trees is enough. Whether this can this will be accepted by the by the by the <laughs> expert that's another story but uh, my personal understanding and my personal thinking is that uh, we should go in that way because we we, we have also done uh, many other uh, benchmark studies uh, because of the time I, I didn't show them here and we have quite good uh, prove, uh, evidence to prove that basically the automatic method has already collected almost uh, quite many trees that are visible in the data and only the small trees are, are missing so if we if we still follow the traditional protocol we ask every single tree like bigger than one centimeter five centimeter seven centimeter to be recorded in the field i i think it's very difficult for the automatic so the technologies to go into the practice but if we have a new theory this should be possible. And uh, th th this is also very difficult. I, 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 I do not think that this can be changed in, in a short period of time. But in, I encourage all the researchers and the students and the professors to, to think in that way. And if, if that uh, a new, new scenario is established, we may come to a totally brand new period of time that uh, we do not need to care about the small trees. I mean, for certain applications like forest inventory. Of course, for the for the for the e ecology, that is a different story. And for the for the single scan, I think is uh, quite similar. I think the single scan is uh, uh, the performance and the potential is uh, quite uh, underestimated currently. So in in the single scan, basically that we can still get. A, large amount of information even though that we have only one viewpoint that only half of the object is recorded and we only have like probably 70% uh, or 60% of all the ob object from this uh, single scan but uh, still like even with this uh, single scan observations if we can develop a new theory like to link this uh, individual I mean to the observe the trees observed in the single scan to the airborne observations, we can still like to build another brand new possibility. So if you understand what I mean. That... Yes, I, I, think I understand what you mean. And I agree with you in too many things. So pro probably just depend on the detail we, we need. Or I, it is what you, what you said. Maybe for forest inventory, we, we don't need so much detail and we could do it with a, a smaller point cloud data or 
yeah we we, mm -hmm. we 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 need we need important we need important data uh, information and we also need the theory and uh, the protocol how to how to use this uh, not comprehensive data how to put it into practice and eventually that uh, the the result may be maybe not bad at all even though that is contradict to the conventional protocol Okay, thank you very much. Hello, hello, Liam. Hi. Hi, uh, hello. Hello, a very nice presentation. Oh, thanks. Yeah, th thank you. And I am Tiwari from India. Mm, yes, we have been seen in, in, in the previous uh, uh, workshop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So actually you have told me about the height meter net. That yeah. your uh, your TLS uh, is not very appropriate, and moreover the transition techniques. But uh, this uh, UAV that is very accurate, whether it is less than a twenty meter tree, twenty one to thirty meter tree, or more than thirty meter tree. Mm. So you are telling that uh, this unmanned vehicle. That UV, it is yeah. better in all conditions. It gives a good estimate in all conditions. Mm. How we are uh, TLS uh, overestimates or underestimates for the trees more than 30 meter and less than 20 meter trees or less than 10 meter trees. So what what is the reason why unmanned vehicles are giving accurate estimate throughout the height uh, boundary, whether it is 21 to 30 or more than 30 or less than 20? And others fails, but at the same times you told this is one question why it performs very good in every condition, but other fails if trees are more than 30 meters. And number two, when we come to plot level, that is at a sensor level, data level, but in sensor level, you are telling that TLS gives better estimates, that is 90%, 80%, like that at sensor level. But at, at sensor level, uh, this unmanned uh, UI is gives only uh, 87% or 55%. So in that condition, what do you suggest? We should go for the terrestrial laser scanning or we should go for the unmanned UAV. Because for, for the tree heights, it's okay. UAV is better estimate. But when we come at the flat level and sensor level, then TLS performs better compared to UAV. So how to make a compromise between these two? Yes, thanks for the question. Uh, so first, first, I think the question is about uh, about about TRS whether whether TRS can be used uh, to estimate tree height in different conditions, right? What's the performance? Yes, I I, I think I think this is a, a really good question because that is a very, I mean, the performance depends very much on the forest conditions. So, in 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 in, in our case, our test case that. Uh, uh, we we experienced a lot of uh, occlusion effects from the TRS from temperature viewpoint. So if in your conditions that in your forest that if there's a lot of branches that, that is very dense, I would imagine that the terrestrial laser point laser scanning will experience a huge challenge, because that is the eventually the very big challenge for a, a fixed a fixed point observation laser scanning. Even even we use very high density that the laser scanning can penetrate the leaves, uh, uh, can penetrate the holes between the leaves. Still, like the observations are quite limited. So uh, I I would as assume that in when there's a lot of occlusions that for trees are bigger than 20 meters at the plot level, it will be very difficult to capture the tree top from terrestrial laser scanning. And actually, this is a part of the reason that why uh, personal laser scanning is uh, successful in this sense, because it can travel around the plot. It can have the different viewpoint from different location of the forest. So this actually compensate for the fixed position, uh, compensate for the occlusion effects. Yes, and then for the, for the second question, uh, I, I, I can I repeat uh, it a little bit? The second question regarding your this uh, 
when it come to product level this sensor level data level yeah at sensor level you have told that uh, tls performance is about 90% 80% but yeah. uh, for the uv it is uh, 87% and 55% so there is a difference of 10 to 20% 20% is a very big margin yeah 20% difference is a huge difference yes so yes yeah, so, so. So yes. what we should do? We should go for this UV still in this condition. When there is a uh, difference of two. Yes. So basically, there there are a couple of way to 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 overcome this. Like uh, one way, one straightforward way is actually to to merge the temperature and the UAV observations. Okay. Basically, that the UAV actually gives the observations from the tree crown very well, but it means the the part of the plot near the ground. And the uh, terrestrial data scanning observe quite well on the ground level, but miss the treetop. So basically, if we just uh, merge these two data sites, that is uh, a very good way to, to overcome these shortcomings. And uh, also another way is that uh, UAV data scanning is also evolved quite uh, quickly. So I would assume that in the future that uh, we, we will have more better uh, sensors that would be able to like to see through the tree crown more, more, and so that we can get more information from the uh, up from the air point of view. Uh, one small question: You told about slam because yeah. most of the people we are using slam for our analysis, and you have told that slam is a failure in forestry. Yeah. So slam is a failure. Then what should be the alternative approach? Whether we should use a FD and slam in combination? What should we should do? Once if SLAM is a failure in forestry, then uh, wh what are the alternative approaches? SLAM plus FD or anything else? So the, the question is that the, the SLAM and SLAM failed in the yeah. mobile and the personal data yeah. scanning, that what should we do? Uh, we cannot do much about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be, be, because 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 that that is uh, because from the mobile point of view that. Uh, it, it relies hev heavily on, on SLAM. Uh, we have also tested before, like to de de uh, depending on the uh, GNSS and the IMU, not using the SLAM. So basically, uh, we have solutions for that. If we do not use SLAM, just using the IMU and the GNSS. So basically, that uh, the, there will be the registration errors, but we can using the the uh, uh, this uh, uh, algorithm to compensate. So it, it is called the multi-single scan. Mm -hmm. So basically, in in each in each uh, trajectory, we estimate the, the information from each trajectory. So that for the for the single tree, we have a, a different observation. Even though the, at the data level, they are not matched perfectly. They are probably look like this or even this. But we can still have a relatively good estimation from each single uh, pass. Yeah. And uh, if we have the uh, estimation from single pass, we can merge them at the uh, object level, at the decision level, rather than from the data level. So basically the registration, like the SLAM is actually solve the problem of registration. For the registration, we can do it at three different levels. So first one that is people always talk about is the data level, that is what, what the SLAM does. And also we can do it in the feature level. We, we find some features and link them together. And also, we can uh, register it and merge the data and at the decision level. So basically, if the slam failed, we go to the uh, feature level registration and the uh, decision level registration. So yeah, I I, I should correct my, my my first my first response that uh, when 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 slam failed, that we should go to the uh, go to go from the data level to the feature and the decision level merging. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. Uh, Dr. Liang. Yeah. Yeah. We have uh, four questions from the audience. Uh, yes, I have uh, write the questions in the chat area. Can you can you see the question? Okay. Yeah, the uh, chat area. Okay. Okay, you can choose. Yes, um, question. Uh, first uh, question. 
whether TLS under underestimates the height of the tree is related to the distance between the tree or the scanning distance? Yes, the, the answer is, 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 uh, is yes. So basically the underestimation coming from the longer distance, eventually that's the, the underestimation coming from the occlusion effect. And the occlusion effect is a, a function between the uh, object distribution and also the distance. When the distance become larger, that uh, op op occlusion become more heavily. So yes, the question, the, the answer is yes, uh, it is because of the longer distance between the tree and the scanning partitions. Yes. The second question is, what's the main body to compare the different the difference between species in summer and winter, tree height of or the crown shape, it's like the point distribution. So in the in the winter time, that uh, for the conifers, uh, because conifers do, do not lose leaves, so in the summer and the winter, that the uh, point color the point actually reflect from the tree top always. And for the deciduous, that in the summer when there. When it has the leaves, it uh, reflectance come from the tree top. When during the winter time, that when the, there's no leaf, the point goes to the ground. So, by calculating the difference between the reflectance, we can get the information about the species. And the second question is: Are tree species evergreen or deciduous? So this is a species from the one one species is conifers is evergreen, and the other is uh, uh, deciduous. Yes. Next question is that what's the main challenging from main challenging or problem of using global ecosystem dynamic invest investigation GD ladder to estimate forest canopy height at region or national? Uh, there are oh, this question is about the the, the G, G, GD. So it is a tremendous effort to to get the global observations. Basically, that the thing is that for the global observations, that uh, the problem one 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 common problem is that the the is always like a sampling design. It's based on the sampling design, and the sampling is basically too sparse. And for this sparse uh, date, there's a lot of uncertainties. Basically, it's hard to to detect or to uh, clarify that where the uh, big foot point are located in. And when they, when this one, this is a, is a, they're uncertain about their positions that is hard to link the, the uh, GD observations to the ground observations. So, because it's always like a need to build uh, some relationship between the ground reference to the uh, satellite observations. But when, when you know where the ground reference are, but you do not know where the, your foot point are so that will be a problem and also like uh, because uh, all this uh, all this uh, satellite remote sensing actually depending where a lot uh, depending on very much on the sufficient ground reference but currently our problem is that we do not have sufficient ground reference because the conventional measurement is so time consuming and uh, costly so that uh, liking the ground reference is also another another reason for, for the difficulty of using the satellite observations. Another question from Sun Yuan. As an expert in TRS, could you please give us some experiment, experimental experience and suggestion? What is the best mode to use TR data for testing other devices, multi-station or single station? Uh, definitely multi-station, because multi-station actually gave the the best uh, possible date, uh, point cloud date among all the all the 3D remote sensing technologies. Uh, using the multi scan and especially merge them into into the point cloud that uh, it, it 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 basically it basically builds the foundation for any for any comparisons, and I. I do in, encourage and suggest any comparisons finally be compared with either the field reference or with the uh, multi-scan TRS. And multi-scan TRS typically like like a five five scan per plot or even be even even more scan. Yeah. 
and uh, how many stops does it take to make a multi stop? Assume, assuming that the experiment is facing the same age, pure force, and extract relative parameter. So, I suppose this question is about how many scans is needed for uh, multi scan observations. Uh, similar to the first question that we discussed, that eventually this is a uh, this is a compromising between the between the level of details and and, and the cost. So typically, like five scan is uh, uh, provide quite good result. And if you want to have like more detailed information, if you want to go to the branches, or if you do do want to re uh, record every single tree, every small tree, uh, five is not enough. We need to go to use more. But if the majority of the information, majority information is enough, I think typically five is is okay. And also like the forest conditions is also a very relevant issue because when the forest become complicated, the visibility drop quickly. So in at that point that we need more observations. Uh, yes. And another question is, uh, can you explain the accessibility to data in different countries? Are uh, there countries level applications for using TRS data? This is from from Otto Conger. I suppose uh, currently the TRS is uh, is not practically used in in any country. In a couple of countries that uh, the force inventory has already started to to use to, to investigate. It. The, uh, the use of TRS, and uh, my expectation is like in in three to five years that TRS can be used operationally in easy forest condition. Te technically, it is ready, but uh, uh, there are also an, a, a lot of practical concerns. So whether it can be it will be used is a different story. But uh, the tech technique is already there for the for the for using TRS in the easy forest conditions. Thank you. I, I can comment here only that, um, um, yes, in Finland, uh, for sure, the TLS is at least in test in statistical forest inventory. Yeah. And it's, uh, it is the same in, in Estonia, um, that they are, they are implementing it into the, this uh, country level uh, statistical forest inventory. So this is this is uh, yeah that was my question. Thank you for answering. I have uh, another one if you yeah. agree. Yeah, um, please. So that is um, um, if if you look on the practical forest manager applications, um, are there any um, that you can suggest or what you can or what you have used in in, in either uh, terrestrial or airborne lidar data. So, so, so the question is like to, from the manager point of view. Yes, from the practical the, forester. Yeah. Applications. So, some, some, some uh, use case. Do you mean that? Uh, yes, that, that, do you have any, any good examples or, or where you can see it, that uh, either the uh, terrestrial or air, airborne LiDAR data is used? Yeah, I, I think one, one, one good scenario that uh, is to, to make the pre-harvest uh, estimation of the volume or the timber, timber volume. That uh, basically this is uh, the owners uh, care about this uh, estimation very much, and currently it's only only the mostly this is the the company who buy the timber actually make estimation. Of course, the owners know some if if they are experienced, they know roughly how how, how many they are. I think in the future that this 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 will be a, a good scenario that the data scanning and point cloud and remote sensing be practically uh, used. Another scenario is, is actually that uh, it, or similar to this pre-harvest estimation that even using the uh, cameras, 
yeah. even using either cameras or cell phone for the for, for its owner to make estimation that how much timber he or she has. And after that, we'll start to negotiate with the company. I yeah. think that, that there will be a lot of uh, user cases there and also I mean for, for, for the for the seedling plot for the monitor of the seedling plot for the monitor of the regeneration after the harvest for the estimation or for the make the plan for the for the for the harvester for the harvesting I mean in in, in the harvesting plan that uh, basically the position actually position and the size of the tree matters Currently, it's only the, the operator decide which tree to cut and which tree to to, start, uh, to leave in the ground. And in the future, that I I suppose that uh, all this should be planned in advance rather than just decide in the field. Yeah. And 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 the the only way I would say that the only way to put this into reality is to use remote sensing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for your comment. Um, um, yeah, in in Estonian case, I can just give you an an example that um, we also use um, uh, the aerial lidar data uh, on a country level. So there is a there is a land board uh, who is doing the country wise measurements. So the Estonia is covered with two years with all lidar data. Mm. ALS data is is accessible for all country and they they have created a deri derivate from there so that's the mm -hmm. vegetation height and uh, i was really pleased to see your couple of studies where you con compared the ground level and and other types of uh, als measurements or dls measurements so it's uh, it's very promising but uh, today I would say that uh, we have, I have really understood that the practical forest management planners, they are really using this um, country level, uh, this um, vegetation derivation you know, for the height estimations. So it's, uh, it is already um, in use and it is more precise in most cases than the, uh, than the field measurement just on site. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much to, to, to share this information that uh, about, about this. Uh, if you have interest, uh, I can send you uh, the links, just, uh, just write me, I can send you the links on um, what they look like and because they, you can use it for us, of course, for Estonia only, but yeah. uh, it but, is really accessible. Yeah, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, that, that definitely that I'm interested. I will, I will contact contact you. Yes, thanks. Uh, the next next question is that uh, from from John, what new skill do you recommend teaching or incorporate in biology, ecology, forestry, or geography to take advantage take advantage of the new era of sensor and big data? Hmm, this is a really good question. <laughs> Oh, professors, <laughs> um, I think from the teaching from the teaching side that definitely the understanding of the the technology is uh, is is required. So basically, that uh, nowadays uh, technology development is so fast. Like, uh, what is the latest technology? What is the latest available solution? It's changing very fast. I mean, as a teacher, that uh, how to how to incorporate this. Uh, latest technology uh, latest knowledge to the to the to the to the to the classroom i think for me at least for me that is the most important thing for example like like uh, like this uh, for the tree height estimation that it, it, the, the, the conclusion only come like from from uh, 2019 so i think that this information should be quickly broadcast to the classroom and uh, and also like in the future, I, I, I expect there will be more there will be more new knowledge uh, derived from from researchers. And uh, and for the biology, ecology, 
forestry and uh, geography. So uh, I think similarly to understand the state of art and also, also to understand the, the true, true story of the state of the art. <laughs> Because at, at some point that uh, basically the, the re research uh, papers only tell about the good stories rather than the bad stories. <laughs> so so I, I, I think that uh, it's important for the, for the as a researchers, teachers and student, student to have a comprehensive understand of the state of art. The good, the good, the, the positive side and the negative side, the advantages and also disadvantages rather than just to focus on, on, on one side of the story. I think that uh, especially for the teachers, for the students, it's, it's important to, to, to let them know what's the real condition, what's the, what's the advantages and disadvantages simultaneously, simultaneously. <laughs> this is something that uh, we not often see from the, often read from the research papers, but as a teacher, and uh, we, need, we need to give this information to the student. And also like, like another, another good point, I suppose, is to how to use the technology in, in Pacific research area, like in, in ecology and in forestry, in biology, the requirement for the info, information is different. So, for example, like like uh, currently the in the research area, the a branch is very important a study topic. Uh, so basically, I I would say that this is very important for biology and ecology, but uh, for the forestry, like it typically is uh, it has uh, some uh, values, but uh, at some point that uh, the forestry is not care about the uh, branch distribution that much. So. Uh, for, for the research in the different areas, how to understand uh, properly according to their own work, own research, own need, I think is an important point to, to be keep in mind. Yes. All right. Yeah. So, is there is there some other questions that I suppose we have a very good, very good. Thank you, thank you, uh, John. I think we have very good uh, discussion, and also that uh, we are open open for the discussion also later on. So I I share my my email at the last slides. So basically, it's my name at hotmail.com. So if you have any questions and or want to exchange some knowledge, some information, that I'm really happy to to be connected with you and to share the information. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, maybe now is the time. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So we can thank you, Dr. Liang, for excellent uh, presentation. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Uh, Shadow, uh, do you have anything to, any words to see? Not, not really, nothing important, except that uh, I just add my thanks to yours. And it was an excellent presentation. And what I liked very much was that Chilian did not only tell us about the potential, but also about the limitations of the new technology. And uh, I also liked the comment from John John G. John G. Uh, he wrote that. Uh, about the new era of census and big data, the new era of census and big data. Well, we meet again next week, same time. Thank you very much, Hong Jin, for coordinating this. Uh, no hiccups, everything went smoothly. And we had a wonderful, excellent, great presentation and discussion.
Okay, so we will see you next week. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. See you next week. See you next week. See you next week. Ciao. Ah, Jaime. <laughs> Right. Right. Yeah, sounds, sounds, <laughs> sounds it go it, it went well. Yeah. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, uh,